Barbara Hale embarked on her journey in Hollywood during the year 1942. Interestingly, her initial aspirations did not lean towards acting. Instead, she harbored dreams of pursuing a career in the realm of art. Helen from DeKalb, Illinois, Barbara was born on April 18, 1922, into a family of Scotch-Irish heritage. Her parents, Willem and Luther Ezra Hale, were nurturing souls, with her father working as a landscape gardener. Shortly after Barbara's birth, the family relocated to Rockford, bringing along her elder sister, Juanita, born in 1913. Raised in the serenity of a provincial haven, Barbara's artistic inclinations flourished. At the tender age of 12, she commenced her endeavors in ballet and tap dancing, while also making her presence felt in local theater productions. Even during her school days, Barbara's inherent talent and passion for painting began to surface. Hence, after completing high school in Rockford, she decided to pursue her artistic aspirations at the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts. Life in the bustling city of Chicago proved to be more arduous than Barbara had envisioned. The competition within the esteemed walls of the Academy of Fine Arts was fierce, leaving her in awe of the immense talent surrounding her. While initially aiming to contribute to the advertising industry, she soon realized the challenges inherent in such a demanding field. Consequently, Barbara shifted her focus towards modeling. She collected her first experiences while posing for a comic strip named Ramblin' Bill. By a stroke of fate, Barbara's path crossed with Al Seaman, the esteemed head of the Chicago Model Bureau. Enthralled by Barbara's potential, he wasted no time in sharing her photographs with Radio Keefe Orpheum Studios. Soon enough, an audition was arranged, and Barbara found herself signing a stock contract setting the stage for her journey to California. Freshly arrived in the enchanting world of Hollywood, Barbara initially found herself in small yet memorable roles. Whether it was portraying a girl in a bustling bar, a charismatic salesgirl promoting stockings, or a captivating dancer at a glamorous party, her presence on screen was undeniable. Notably, in The Seventh Victim, 1943, she showcased her abilities as a witness in the depths of the subway. It was in the film Higher and Higher, 1944, that Barbara truly shone, sharing the screen with none other than the legendary Frank Sinatra. This marked her breakthrough, propelling her towards subsequent supporting roles in notable works such as The Falcon Out West, 1944, and First Yank Into Tokyo, 1945. These early triumphs and B-movies served as a stepping stone for Barbara to steadily build her reputation opening doors to new opportunities that allowed her to exhibit her undeniable talent as an actress. In addition to her notable presence in Western films like Lone Hand, 1951, and Last of the Comanches, 1952, Barbara Hell gracefully embraced an array of roles in dramas and comedies. A noteworthy example includes her appearance alongside James Stewart in The Jackpot, 1950, where she shared the screen with charm and wit. Another delightful collaboration unfolded in Lady Luck, 1946, where she portrayed the role of a spirited young wife, skeptical about the world of gambling, opposite the talented Robert Young. Barbara Hale skillfully carved out a niche for herself as an actress, establishing a compelling profile characterized by warmth, charm, and a resolute spirit. Her portrayals often centered around strong-minded women who possessed a clear sense of purpose and fearlessly expressed their desires, captivating the hearts of both their on-screen counterparts and viewers alike. Barbara infused her characters with an impressive personality, endearing them to audiences through her undeniable charisma and the soothing timbre of her voice. One role that stood out as atypical for Barbara Hell was her portrayal of Zoe Crane in The Houston Story, 1956. Both the actress's appearance and the character's circumstances within the plot perfectly showcased this departure. The development of Zoe's character seemed to align with the archetypal female roles found in film noir. However, Barbara's portrayal subverted expectations, steering clear of the conventional bad girl archetype. Barbara Hale's stock contract with Radio Keefe Orpheum lasted over six years. After that, Arrangements with Columbia Studios and other production companies followed. Destiny intervened when Barbara Hell crossed paths with her future husband, Bill Williams, on the set of West of the Pecos in 1944. 
Reflecting, she fondly declared it to be a case of love at first sight. Bill Williams, originally from Brooklyn, was born on May 21, 1915, and had previously pursued a career in athletics before venturing into the world of show business. He initially showcased his talents as a dancer in vaudeville and, in 1944, signed a stock contract with Radio Keith Orpheum. Barbara and Bill exchanged vowels in 1946, solidifying their union. The following year, on July 24, 1947, their first daughter, Barbara Willa Joanna, affectionately known as Jody, came into the world. Residing in Los Angeles, the small family embraced a harmonious life, with Barbara seamlessly balancing her career and the responsibilities of motherhood. Despite the challenges of juggling work and family, Barbara persevered, cherishing both roles deeply. On February 16, 1951, Barbara welcomed the arrival of their son, William Theodore. Their joyous family expanded further when their third child, Juanita Laurely, was born in Los Angeles on December 22, 1953, completing their loving unit. With the addition of Juanita, Barbara began contemplating the idea of stepping away from her acting career as the fulfillment of being a mother took precedence. However, Barbara Hell couldn't resist the call of the entertainment world entirely. While she embraced the joys of motherhood, she selectively accepted roles in movies and made guest appearances on television, consciously limiting her involvement in acting endeavors. That is, until 1956, when an opportunity that would shape her legacy presented itself, the role of Della Street in the beloved Perry Mason series, alongside the talented Raymond Burr in the lead. The character of Della Street in the Perry Mason series marked a notable departure from Barbara Hale's previous roles in the 1940s and early 1950s. While still warm-hearted and strong, Della possessed a different essence, characterized by her unwavering dedication, support, and loyalty. Her role showcased a more devoted and supportive nature, distinct from the single-mindedness of Barbara's earlier portrayals. Barbara Hale's contribution to the Perry Mason series, although small, was crucial. Her presence was indispensable, and her work on the show demanded significant effort from the entire team. Despite her intermittent appearances, Barbara's commitment extended to working for substantial periods throughout the week. However, it is worth noting that the set was known for its familiar and harmonious atmosphere, a detail often mentioned by those involved. In recognition of her exceptional portrayal, Barbara Hell received an Emmy Award in 1959 for her role in the Perry Mason series with a subsequent nomination in 1961. She continued her involvement in the show for nine years until its conclusion, establishing a remarkable tenure. However, Barbara's friendship with Raymond Burr, the series star, endured beyond the show's end. In the mid-1980s, when Burr was offered the opportunity to star in Perry Mason, a made-for-TV movie, he agreed on the condition that Barbara Hale reprised her role as Della Street. She willingly accepted, faithfully staying by Burr's side until his passing in 1993, honoring their enduring friendship and professional bond. Barbara went on to produce commercials and appeared as a guest star in several television shows between the Perry Mason films and the Perry Mason television series. She also appeared in a few films, including Airport, 1970, and The Giant Spider Invasion, 1975. Sadly, on January 26, 2017, Barbara Hale died of complications from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease at age 94. She was interred in the Forest Lawn Memorial Park. Goodbye and rest in peace, legendary actress Barbara Hale.